Welcome back to Dickin' Around Outdoors. Now I must admit that my first experiences with dehydrated food didn't really sell me on the fact that it was good food that I wanted to take with me and eat regularly. And I'm thinking Tang and astronaut ice cream, if you recall those days. It was cool, it went up to space, but as food, wasn't my favorite. Since then, I've kind of thought of dehydrated food as something that only backpackers would take or the preppers would put in their basement. But for me, it didn't have any place at the campsite. I like cooking food. I think it's part of the experience, cooking over a fire. It just kind of give ambiance to the whole thing. But that all changed when we began planning our 2021 overland trip, where we would be gone for a month in our Jeep. And for various reasons, we had very little room to pack. In fact, we couldn't take a cooler with us and we don't have a refrigerator. So as we tried to figure out what we were going to do, I begrudgingly decided that we were going to have to look at some dehydrated food just to save space. Now, I wasn't a big fan of a lot of the dehydrated food on the market. It's great if that's all you can get, but I didn't relish the idea of a month of just eating that. So in looking around, I discovered a book this book, The Dehydrator Cookbook for Outdoor Adventures by Mosier. And as I thumbed through it, I thought, boy, this stuff sounds really good. So we made a few of the recipes, and I will tell you that the food that we dehydrated at home was spectacular. It was fresh tasting. It had the kind of flavors that I would probably never have made at camp otherwise. And it was convenient. And today we're going to show you how to dehydrate and pack one of these meals. It's an easy meal. It's lemony lentil salad. You use cold water to rehydrate it. So we use this recipe while we were driving on trails. We would just put water in and keep going up the trail. 20 minutes later, our lunch would be ready. We didn't have to break out the cook kit. Nothing like that. We did it right in the storage bag. And it was dang convenient and really tasty. So stick around, we're going to show you how we do it, and we're going to talk about another book that I've found since then that I think is really good, and I encourage you to try this at home because the food is better than you can get commercially, you can pick the ingredients, and it really does enhance the experience when you're camping. As I said, the recipe for today is lemony lentil salad. And this recipe really couldn't be easier. And it's so much better, I think, than any of the other dehydrated food that I've ever had. Homemade is the way to go. So for this recipe, all we did is we cooked a cup and a half of lentils. We added in some peppers, shredded carrot, celery. We're gonna mix that with a dressing that includes olive oil, rice vinegar, lemon juice, a little thyme, salt and pepper. We're just gonna mix that together. Then we're going to pack the dehydrator. So let me mix this up, let it set for a second or two. I'll talk about the dehydrator and then we'll load the dehydrator and get it going. Just stirring in the dressing now. We want to make sure that we get it well coated. We want to make sure every bite is delicious. So we're just going to stir that up. We're going to let it set for a couple minutes. We'll talk about the dehydrator. So let's set this aside for a minute. Today we're going to use a Nesco Garden Master dehydrator. You can use an Excalibur type as well. The only thing I would say is make sure that your dehydrator has a, an adjustable temperature. We're going to set this at 135 for this recipe, but other recipes require a different temperature to make sure they dehydrate and cook correctly. And get one with a fan. Make sure that you are able to circulate the air. It's more efficient and it does a better job of drying. Also for this recipe, given that we have lentils, we are using one of the solid plastic inserts to make sure that nothing falls down through the plates. Just a quick view of packing this onto the dehydrator plates. As you can see, we did it in a single layer. We are going to come back and give this a bit of a mix about three hours in. Total drying time is six to eight hours for this. And once that's done, we'll come back. We'll show you what it looks like when it's dehydrated. We'll show you how we pack it. And we'll also talk about the books that we found and why we like them. So stick around. 
Dehydration is done. We went for the full eight hours. As you saw, the trays were packed pretty well. Hence the full eight hours of drying. I did go in every three hours, give everything a bit of a stir just to make sure that all the surfaces got good airflow and everything dried up. Now once it's dry, this is what it looks like. Now I know you can't believe looking at it now, but that is one extremely tasty lunch. Let's go ahead, I'll show you how I portion this, how I bag it. We'll talk about a couple different bagging methods, and then we'll go over the books and I'll tell you what I like about them, what the differences are, so that you can get started on dehydrating your own camping food if that's something that's interesting to you. Now that we've got all the dehydration done, it's time to pack the food up. Now what I find easiest to do, and since I have a kitchen scale, is that I, I can take the number of servings, and the book tells you how many servings each recipe makes. This is four servings. I'm going to pack this up into two bags because camera lady and I share a lunch. So I'm going to go ahead and weigh this out. It's 326 grams. If you don't have a scale, don't sweat that. Just pour it out, eyeball it, split it into half. And now we're going to go ahead and bag this up and get it ready for storage. So we've stored this now. We've measured it out. There's two servings in two different bags. And we're using Ziploc freezer bags. When we put the food in, we went ahead and pressed as much air out as we could, sealed the bag up. I would encourage you not to use thinner Ziploc bags or generic off-brand bags. Uh, and the reason why is the Ziploc freezer bags are thick so they're going to be a little more durable and also if you have a meal that requires boiling water to rehydrate it the Ziploc freezer bags will be fine. And what I do for the label is I simply put in the name of the recipe, how many servings it is, how you rehydrate it so it's one cup of cold water for 15 or 20 minutes and the expiration date which in this case is one year from the dehydration date. Now not every one of these recipes is going to be good in a Ziploc bag for a year. That's based on the lifespan of the most perishable ingredient. So the storage times in the book in a Ziploc bag range from six months to one year depending on what's in the recipe. That's plenty of time I think if you're going to use it for next season's camping for example. If you're trying to make the food and store it for longer periods of time, if you're prepping for an emergency, that type of thing, there are some other ways that you can store the food that extends the life cycle. And that would be primarily vacuum sealing, in which case you could look at doubling or potentially even tripling the time that the food will stay fresh. Now, I'm not an FDA food scientist, but that's what I understand. Uh, the vacuum sealing will extend the time frame by one to two times. Also, you can look at the Mylar bags. Those are pretty popular. You can fill the Mylar bag. You can put in an oxygen absorber, seal the bag with an iron, or I believe you can actually seal one of those with a vacuum sealer sealing strip. If you want to try some of these recipes at home, this is the book that we originally bought and used for our month-long overland adventure. This is the dehydrator cookbook for outdoor adventure. And this book we found to be really excellent. The recipes were much better than I expected. And what I like about this book is it's kind of a 101 primer on dehydration. Then it gives you the recipes. And the recipes in this book are complete recipes. So we made, for example, the lemony lentil salad. We also made a porter infused chili, a tuna salad wrap for lunches that was a cold soak. We made a white bean and chicken with poblano stew. And each one of those, you cooked the meal, then you dehydrated it. So it was an entire package. And I really liked that. And the recipes, as I said, were really spectacular. The other book that we have is Recipes for Adventure by Glenn McAllister. And this is also designed as a recipe book, I guess, if you will, for outdoors and, and camping and travel. But the difference is that the McAllister book, while it does have the 101 on how to dehydrate, it really is a recipe book that uses a combination of other dehydrated things. So you would dehydrate a number of different ingredients 
and then when you wanted to put the meal together you would a la carte pick the ingredients from your dehydrated pantry if you will put them together and then you would make the meal in the bag so they're slightly different concepts I think both are very valid they're just different types of books if you're going for the first time out the box I think the Mosier book is probably the easier one to use so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you found it useful I hope you try dehydration if you haven't subscribed please take a minute to hit the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner to all of our current subscribers thank you we love you guys and as always if you like the content please like it and share it with your friends so Take care, and we'll see you outdoors.